welcome to the Merry Boozers channel, guys. Glad to be here, as always, for this 4th of July weekend, celebrating our independence. Um, we've been out swimming, we've been barbecuing, we went and spent time with Papa this weekend. Um, been a really good weekend. Papa has got the HE111 just about finished. Um, I've got a few little things I still have to address on it before it's going to be ready for its maiden flight. But I wanted to give you the update after assembly, let you really see the airplane. Because it's one thing to see it come out of the box, it's another to see it all put together. We've got the old storage set behind us. We are going to be revisiting this in the very near future. We've got a new receiver for it. We have isolated the issue of why the airplane actually had a problem on our first flight. We'll go over that with you. And we're going to be updating that airplane to fly it. So it's going to be German time around here in a little bit. Um, Miss Laurie made me some custom decals for the tail. Sorry if it offends anybody, but if we're building a World War II airplane that's a German fighter, I'm going to put a swastika on the tail just because it's historically accurate. And we like historical accuracy here at the Mary Boozers channel. So. Anyway, the HE-111 assembly, Papa's notes on it were that it was very easy. The only thing he kind of struggled with was the landing gear. And it's because we went with a different landing gear than what was recommended. Um, we ended up using the A-10 struts off of the free wing uh, big A-10. Um, I had an extra set of them and they looked perfect. And then I had these wheels and I'll show you all this stuff here in a minute. But... Uh, the airplane is really beautiful, guys, and he went crazy on this. This is the most intense Papa dotting you'll ever see tonight. He dotted this airplane twice, once with the silver dot and then a black dot over all the silver dots, so it was pretty nuts. Um, I've really been impressed with the airplane, though, and like I said, it was about time for us to do a Black Horse update. You know, these airplanes take us a little bit longer. It's not a four screws and it's ready to go flying kind of airplane, but they're very rewarding and you get something that's completely different that's not available anywhere else. Um, we actually had some different pictures set up on that first screen. Um, we had Michael, ooh man, somebody's squeaking. Sorry. We had Michael Reitska, got his F4, it's all put together, he's getting ready for his maiden flight, and we had the pictures up there, but for some reason our computer decided to show the stuff from last week, so I don't know what happened there, but we always try and put whatever's going on in the community up there. Um, a little update, Papa is going to be gone for about a month now, this is the time of year where he takes his month-long trip up to Tennessee, um, he's going to go on up there, and, and Mom and him are going to go on their RVing trip. Um, and then they've got another trip coming later in the year where they're going to go to Texas. So we're not going to have Papa for a few weeks here at the Mary Boozers channel. But we'll still have a good time, guys, as always. But uh, this was his main project right now. He finished that Nexa P-47. I hope you guys got to see it. And I hope you really enjoyed seeing the content on that airplane. If you didn't follow along on Hobby Squawk, we did a full build thread. There is actually a full build thread up of this airplane currently as it's sitting. Um, we still have to change a few things in there because I haven't got the ESC jet for the airplane. Um, I'm having a little bit of a hard time finding the 270 amp ESCs for this airplane. And I've decided to go with a different motor option than what we have currently mounted. And they're back in stock now, so I just got to order them. But, you know, that's some of the fun things you're going to have to deal with when you're doing a balsa plane is you've got to decide what electronics am I going to use, um, what retracts do I want to use, what struts, because you know some of them do. The, the Nexus series of airplanes come with the struts, whereas the Black Horse, some of these don't. Like this came with no retract and no strut. It did come with a hard mount gear you could put in here and not have retracts, but Who's going to do that when you're building this beautiful bomber? You've got to have your retract. So we did go with the X-Wave Motion RC branded retracts. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, they are a little pricey, but you get what you pay for kind of thing. Um, and guys, the kit is absolutely gorgeous. The cockpit detail. I mean, like I said, we'll show you all around this here in a minute. But yeah, it's kind of German time right now. i got my Tiger setting over here and my Panzer right here above me. 
and then the Fiesler Storch. So we got some German planes around us and tanks and stuff. So I hope I hope all of you are having a wonderful, wonderful Fourth of July. Right now we're getting ready to have a big old thunderstorm here at the Boozers Channel. So if you hear thunder, you've been warned. It's happening. Um, we do have a special thing coming up next weekend. I can't tell you about it 100% yet, but we have a really fun weekend coming up. Um, don't forget your buddy RC Air Marshal has his virtual fly-in tomorrow night for you guys that haven't been to that. It's always a lot of fun. I try and make it there and fly with everybody. So if you've got Real Flight 9 and you go to RC Air Marshal's channel tomorrow night, you can always check that out and come fly with us. So it looks like everybody's having a good time down in the chats. Wow, y'all are hopping tonight. Wendy, Dave... Lightburner, what's up, man? So, guys, let me get the camera. Um, Lori, if you can do me a favor and get the, the camera ready. Yeah, full screen like that. That's what I wanted. Perfect. And I'm going to walk around here, guys, and pick up our walk-around camera. Now, don't forget it's not stabilized, but I want to get you a good look at this airplane. So, uh, Lori's going to switch it here in just a second. She's just getting everything ready. And there it is. All right, so we'll give you a look around. So this is Papa's new style of dot, if you can see that, where it's got a black dot in the middle of all the silver dots. And he went crazy. And you know guys, if you haven't ever done a uh, black horse plane, I mean their hinges are great. These are all fiberglass hinges actually. This isn't plastic, this is a fiberglass composite hinge. Um, one thing, we got to go in here and put a piece of fuel tubing on here. I haven't had a chance to do it yet. Papa just missed that. Like I said, there's Lori's custom swastika. Sorry if it offends anybody, but that's how this airplane should be. It does not come with the swastika. You have to make that yourself if you want it. And it does not come with the rivets. Like I said, Papa did all this. But the airplane's fit and finish is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, another thing is it did not come with the guns. Papa had to make the guns himself, and he made these out of a dowel rod, and basically it's a straw. And then he made a control horn for the end of it, a ball link control horn for the handle, and then the charging handle is just a little piece of rod. So he made them himself, you know. Um, the windows look really good on it. Instead of gluing this on, the kit recommends you glue this on. But Papa did screws so that I could get back into it because I like to detail the cockpits. And you can see the rivet detail is just outstanding on this airplane. Some guys don't like our rivets because they think they don't look scale, but you know what? We really like them. And he just followed all the printed lines that come on this airplane right out of the box. Takes a very long time. Papa did one heck of a good job, though. I mean, take a look at that, guys. Same thing here. We tried not, what I asked Ed to do is to not screw any of these plastic cowls, windows of any kinds. I don't like these glued on because if you have to work on something, I like to be able to take this off. So that's why I ask him never to glue any of this stuff. Making my way around. These are the TA. 152 flight line spinners and props and right now I don't have these actually screwed on see I've just got them on there and that's the Admiral GP 15 motor I believe off the top of my head but we're gonna end up using a different motor this would have worked uh, if I was running a two blade but because the TA 152 has this special prop I'm gonna use the TA 152 4S propellers or motors and the same ESC's to run this airplane on. So right now I just got these slid on there for you to see, but they actually fit beautifully. There's a little bit of gap all the way around, so cooling's going to be able to get in there. You know, and we did all this has holes to where cooling's going to get down in here. So I'm going to mount my ESC's down in here. Um, but yeah, cooling holes everywhere. So like I said, this is an A-10, free wing A-10 strut. And then this is actually the tires from a um, General Hobbies Cub. I had these in a drawer. I never throw away wheels and tires off of old airplanes. 
and these just fit beautifully under there and looked right. They're green already. They just, they really fit well. So that's what I'm using for the wheels. So yeah, anyway, I'll give you another look down the wing. I mean, it's a gorgeous airplane, guys. We'll walk it back up here. You can see that pilot up in there. Papa made these guns also. The airplane did not come with the nose gun. But once again, these guns are just, it's a piece of uh, rod with, basically this is a um, like a coffee stir. And then you've got a piece of dowel rod behind the glass for the gun itself. And then you can see in the back, again, it's a ball link clevis to make the handle with. And he added both guns, the waist gun and the nose gun that way. And then you, you can't really see it because of all the glare right now. And I'm trying to figure out how to cover the glare up. But the, the cockpit's fully detailed. There is a little pilot in there. He is the pilot that comes with the kit. He's not a bad looking pilot. I'm trying to figure out how to get in here really show you that interior but yeah it's got the yoke and everything in there but the glare is not the best right now for us so once again everything's papa dotted and riveted as you'd expect the power is blinking on and off guys so we are getting ready to have a pretty good thunderstorm if we get cut off i'm just going to give you that warning but for now we're going to just give you the keep doing the view around He did a fantastic job on the assembly, guys. One thing I might change in the future is the tailwheel. Um, it's just not a very scale-looking tailwheel. There's nothing that won't function here. It's not that it's not a functional tailwheel. You know, it's actually got some shock absorbing to it. Um, it's just very long, and it's something that's easy to change. Once again, it's got those... Uh, fiberglass hinges. These are not plastic. These are fiberglass. So, and that's like a DeGros style hinge. Really good. Um, these all came pre-slotted. The hinges, you can't see them right now. Dad did a great job on these hinges, but they are pre-slotted. They're just CA glued in. Same thing on the tail. CA glue hinges. Um, I need to tighten this up just a little bit. You can kind of see some of the wrinkles. The first time I put this in the sun, it'll be just like I did with the Nexa plane. It'll stretch it and make it real taut. Ah, Papa Boozer's in here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Papa, we are weathering it. You'll be seeing it in the near future. He just did an outstanding job, guys, though, on these rivets. I mean, the rivet detail on this airplane is absolutely amazing. So these panel lines actually come on the airplane. So you can see like this comes printed, the line came printed, and then he added the dots just down both sides. And once again, guys, we don't go to the scale masters. Our dots can be off by a little bit. If you see they're not right beside each other, it doesn't matter. When you just step back and look at the plane, you can't see that. It just says, holy cow, there's a ton of rivets there. Nobody notices that one's off by a millimeter. You know, if you want to, you can get the ruler out and get exact. So, um, Lori, can you switch to the front for just a second? Um, just because I don't want to be awkward and drop the camera while I'm trying to take the top hatch off. Keep you guys nice and smooth for a second. So the top hatch comes off like this. All right. Now I got that. All right, guys. So here's the inside of the airplane thus far. We've got... Uh, high tech uh, HS 85 BBs. Excuse me, I can't talk. These are the recommended uh, servos from Motion RC. Uh, they actually carry these. They come in four packs or six packs for this airplane. I got a six pack, and that was everything to do the airplane. So you've got one for the rudder, two for the elevator in the inside. So these, one elevator, one elevator. So these work together to run your elevator, and then this is your rudder. Um, I do have my six channel spectrum uh, receiver down here, and there is a satellite right up in here. And then this is the battery tray right here. I've gotta run my battery straps across here, but I'm gonna run this on two 
4S 3000s is the plan, and they'll fit right up in there, up into the nose. You want to get it, see this is actually hollow all the way up in here. So you can get the batteries way up in there. Nose weight, nose weight, nose weight. So the other reason I wanted this to screw on is there's a piece that goes in the cockpit where the guy, the, this guy would sit down, this guy would lay down that ran the guns in here on the real airplane. The guy over on this side didn't sit in a seat. He laid down up into that bubble. And I'm trying to figure out if I could show you that somehow. But for nose weight, do you see that little tray right there? It looks like it's padded almost. See, the pilot would sit there, and the gunner would lay down on this tray here. So that tray is actually hollow, and you can take this front off. And what my plan is, is if for CG purposes, if you look, there's not a lot of nose on this airplane. So I have a feeling I'm going to have issues trying to just make CG with batteries. So my plan was, if we screwed this on, I can take this off and mount my lead weights inside of that. Because it's hollow, and from the other side, you have access to it. So I'm thinking I'm going to add my weight inside of this airplane to make CG. Um, but yeah, very clean. Everything, you know, Papa is one heck of a good builder. Everything's very clean. I know the wire is a rat nest in there right now, and that's because we're still waiting on ESCs and a few other odds and ends, and then I'll zip tie and make this all look real pretty. But uh, for now, I mean, there's tons of room in this airplane. I mean, tons of room. You can see no issue with fitting where you need stuff. These are the wing bolts right here. So you've got your spar comes across right here, and your wings are set in with an Allen screw right here and right here. Most Black Horse planes that I've seen yet I've only had two of them, but both of my Black Horse planes have this same wing design where it's got this piece that slides in like this and then an Allen key that goes down and holds it, if you can see that. And that's what holds the wings on. Now, I don't foresee this airplane being under a lot of stress. This is a bomber, not a fighter. But yeah, it's, and it's, it's laid out just like you'd expect. You've got a nice mechanical hatch and it keys in right here. I'm trying to give you guys the best information I can. There's not been a lot of these out on the internet, so I'm thinking this is gonna be something that, you know, you guys that have been interested in this airplane, you might just be loving this right now, but see that just keys in real nice. And the fit of this top compartment is great. And just like that. And I mean, it. that fit is great on this airplane. So yeah, I mean, guys, it's beautiful. It's what I've expected. Papa did a fantastic job on the assembly. Oh, I forgot. There's also on the bottom of the HE-111, this is the bottom gunner turret, and Dad made the gun for this, too, because it actually didn't come with one. Um, so he designed a little gun for the bottom, too. Yeah, he had to cut these out. Uh, Kind of weird running this, but he cut these out for the gear to swing back into here. Um, give you the bottom shot of the airplane. It's got that German blue color that comes on the black horse German planes. All Papa dotted. So he did black dots on the bottom, not silver. There's Lori. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, just to give you that shot. But yeah, I've been really impressed with it. And I guess while I'm here, let me turn around and we'll kind of just give you another look at this. Some of you guys that may not have been around the channel when we did this one, this is the Black Horse Fiesler Storch. Um, it is gigantic, if you didn't know. I mean, there's my hand. Um, but Papa did the air up tires on it. We are planning on getting this out and flying it again soon. Um, we did have a few issues with this airplane, so we were originally running a Admiral 8-channel receiver. And we have high-tech, high-voltage servos in this airplane, and it come to find out that an Admiral receiver can't run high-voltage. So that was where most of our issues were coming from. The airplane still flew good, 
but it always didn't fly exactly right. So now I've got a power safe receiver. So this has four satellites and then you run two onboard batteries to run this receiver. And this makes it redundancy. So if one battery dies, you still have power to your receivers. You have four receivers in the airplane. So there's really no issue of ever losing signal. Um, these are about $150, but it's all the receiver you could ever need. Laura, let's go front view for a second while I get this out of the package. I'll show you this, guys, if you haven't ever seen one. Um, this is my first power safe receiver. I actually ordered it just for that airplane, and I got two of them, just in case we do another large airplane in the future. Make sure that tire's not going to fall off the table. So this is pretty cool, guys. For you that are looking at getting into these bigger airplanes, FYI, as long as you're running standard voltage to your receivers, you can run regular receivers. If you go into the high voltage stuff, you're gonna to have to start looking at bigger receivers. So this is my new receiver for the storage. I wanted redundancy and I wanted to not have to worry about the airplane losing signal ever again after the scariness that we had. So handy cam. So this is the ar 1212 Zero X. Never used one of these before, but this is a uh, 12 channel, I believe, off the top of my head. But the thing that you need to see is look at all the satellite receivers for this. I can put one in the tail, you know. Look at that. I got lots and lots of length. So I could put one in the tail, I could put one in the midsection. Hey, look, I could put one in the wing. You know, I can put satellite receivers everywhere on this. And then you have, like I said, onboard power is provided by two 2S LiPos on this. If y'all are curious what our setup ever looks like, there it is in the background if you haven't seen it before. But anyway, two 2S LiPos to run this, and that's just for your onboard power. This plane is not going to care about carrying two extra batteries up in the nose. But yeah, anyway, just so you know, when you start looking at gigantic you know, 10 foot airplanes, you've got to start looking at little different receivers. So, hey, you know, I've never said I knew everything there was to know about RC. I've been learning as I go. And that ended up being our issue on the Storch is that we had a servo or a receiver that was not rated for the high voltage. It was only putting like 4.8 volts to the servos and the servos needed 6.4 volts minimum, I believe. I have to look it up again. It's a little confusing, and I've only been through it once or twice. This is the first time I've ever dealt with it, though. Right here. So, I, I have to look it up to get exact on it, but that's what actually happened. So, we are running a standard receiver in this. We're running standard servos. They're standard voltage. We won't have any issues. Um, I do have a BEC in the storage currently that I'm going to take out, and I'm going to put it in this airplane. And that would get our onboard power for this. Um, yeah. So anyway, that is kind of what's going on with our Black Horse stuff right now. You know, the other cool thing, you know that I have tanks, guys. You know, tanks. So... You haven't seen the tank. No? No, we were, we were seeing an electric cord. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the screen. But I believe these are very close to in scale to each other. I will have to verify it. But I actually believe these are very close to end scale. Anyway. So this could make for some fun videos. Even if they're not in scale, you can cheat it by getting closer to the tank and the plane being further away. But yeah, anyway, some fun. We got lots of German stuff. If you haven't noticed, I really like World War II history. And I really like German history. So it's not that I like the Nazis or anything, but I, I'm very fascinated by it. Um, History is something that we should never forget. This is something that Papa has instilled in me since I was a young kid, and I wish more people would do this. Uh, Lori, let's go front view for a minute. I think we kind of showed him around for a second. Let me sit down. So, something Dad has always instilled in me is a passion for history. Um, I've always, always been fascinated with history. And I just want to make sure I'm not going to drop this on the floor before I sit down. Alright. 
So, growing up, we always watched the History Channel, although we called it the Hitler Channel back then. They've changed now to where they're the Mountain Men and the Pawn Shop Store Channel, so I don't watch it near as much as I used to. But the good news is, is most of the History Channel's real History Channel programs are on YouTube now, and so you can still go back and watch them. Um, but something that I... I don't know why I wasn't the normal kid. Instead of wanting to watch cartoons, I wanted to sit in the living room and watch World War II documentaries with my father. And I guess that's where my love for World War II history has come from. So, you know, I know jets are the hot thing right now. And I enjoy flying them, and they're really cool. But to me, if I could have this or a new jet, I'd take this any day of the week. I love my World War II fighters, bombers. Um, I couldn't believe when Motion RC brought out a B-24. Out of all the things in the world to make in foam, they made a B-24. Which I, you know me, Mary Boozers, it's all about a B-24. We were like, yes, got to have it instantly. And we've got the measuring tape out and we were going, holy cow, this thing's huge. The cat's over here eating a box right now, so he's driving me crazy. But... Uh, yeah, I, I love World War II airplanes. That's my favorite, and it always will be my favorite. Prop jobs. Um, not to say I don't fly everything, but, you know, my favorite. Everybody has to have a favorite. Um, you know, and I hear a lot of guys say, what's your favorite airplane? You know, it's kind of a loaded question, but if I really had to pick one airplane, what's your very favorite looks? flight characteristics, it has to be a P-47. Whether you're talking a Nexa P-47, an E-Flight, an FMS, whoever's P-47 you're talking, they all fly good. Dynam P-47. Change the motor, hop it up a little bit, it's a fantastic flying airplane. If you want a Warbird that you're really going to enjoy, get a P-47. There's one for every budget right now. There's one for every power system. You know, I'm looking right now, Lori, Horizon is out of those 12 channel receivers. Where did you get your receiver? I bought, so I can't say your name, Joseph Youngblood. It's hard to read it from here. Um, I bought that receiver about three months ago, actually. So, yeah, they could be out right now. That's been my biggest issue. So the reason this is not ready to fly right now, to talk on that issue, um, I haven't been able to get the ESCs for this airplane. I've been waiting for the ones that I want to come back in stock. I know I could buy X brand from Horizon Hobby right now, but it's going to come with the wrong battery connector on it. And I don't want to resolder the battery connector. I'd rather just wait for the the ESC that Motion made for the motor that's in the airplane and just pair them up together. Um, the airplane's already built out all Motion parts. Let's just finish it in Motion parts. Um, it's not that I can't work with Horizon or anybody else, but, you know, I, I'd rather have the ESC that I already know is trusted and already works in a bazillion different airplanes, no problem. So I'm going to wait for the ESC for the... Dora, which I believe is now in stock. I have to go back in and look, but I think they got it on the last shipment. So I need the do two Dora motors, TA-152 motors, and I need two ESCs to finish this airplane. So, anyway. You've been asked if you have ever watched the Wings series on Discovery. Wings of... Wings of the Luftwaffe. I have definitely watched that, Guniac. It's been a while ago, but I have. You know, guys, I tell you, I love all those. World War II in color, Vietnam in color, uh, Hitler's super weapons, and all those different documentaries. I loved them. Um, I still watch them to this day. Lori hates them. Normally, if Lori's trying to go to bed, I put on my World War II history stuff, and she's instantly asleep. Yep. <laughs> but I love them. And that's about the times that I get to watch them right now because she just doesn't care for them as much and I'm not going to force her to watch the stuff, but I love that's it. interesting. I have a few ideas. I don't know what Pop is talking about right now. Know, that's, that's me. Now, the Life Veteran came up with a great t-shirt idea and I'm just, it's killing me right now it's and I have to work on it. 
Okay. Well, we got to save it. We don't want to copy it. No, you can just let me. Whatever. Um, I agree. I like the FW190, but the door is a little weird. Hey, you know, it's different. This is the fun part of RC to me, is there's an airplane for everybody right now. If you can't find a foam, a balsa, whatever, if you can't find an airplane that tickles you right now, man, how? There are so many options right now. Um, and there's so many neat airplanes that we've never seen before. HE-111, you know? There's mm -hmm. F-14s for 500 bucks. I remember when an F-14 would have cost you thousands to get. Now you can get one for 500 bucks, you know? You know, Ryan, oh, that's a good point. Soviet World War II air aviation was really interesting. Yeah, you know, an IL-2 would be a really neat airplane. I've never seen anybody do an IL-2. Uh, there's a lot of really neat Russian airplanes that don't get as much love. You know, I really think German fighters sell the best, aside from American, of course. The P-51, which has been done to death now. Um, but they sell. The reason that you see 10 bazillion P-51s is because they sell. Um, I'd like to see another uh, BF-109, um, ME-109, somewhere in that range, fighter and a 1600 millimeter. FMS had one. I never was a fan of that desert tan camo though. It's got to be the gray for me with the yellow nose. That's the paint job that needs to be on the ME 109. Um, yeah. I'm trying to read everything. Uh, $599, not $500. Sorry, Victor Shamula. Still, all right, you can buy a. F-14 for $600, not $500. Sorry. <laughs> or if you watch those commercials going on on YouTube right now, you can buy an F-14 for $20. <laughs> no. No, you can't. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's what they were called. You know, Battle of Britain style, though, we've got a Spitfire now. How cool would it be to have the ME-109 so you could do Battle of Britain? Got an HE-111. Yeah, all those really cool airplanes from back then. Papa, I thought you made in the P-47 from Michael. Yes, we have flown the P-47. The video is on the channel. Um, but there's, there's lots of P-47s, guys. And, you know, eventually, if I ever do a big, like, really big, another one bigger than this, if I ever do a quarter-scale Warbird, I will have a Razorback P-47. That is my end goal, big airplane. You know, some guys want jets. I've been down the jet route with the uh, Super Viper. I think Super Viper is big as I'm ever going to go on jets. I really have no ambition to go full turbine. Um, it's just not for me. But if I ever do a big gasser warbird, my next big one is going to be a P-47. I don't know who it's going to come from. I don't even know who makes a big P-47 right now, but if I ever do a big quarter-scale airplane again, it would be a P-47 Razorback. Um, that being said, Papa did a quarter-scale Zero once, and he loved it. And I do agree that a Zero is also a fantastic flying airplane, and I wish there was a big Zero on the market right now. I believe the biggest one in foam currently is the FMS. I have the 1100, it's hanging up on the wall right there. It flies great, it's a little squirrely because it's so small on ground handling. And they put, if you get the 1100 Zero, I know it's up there on the wall, I can't show it to you right now. But if you ever get that FMS 1100 uh, Zero, the tail wheel on it is plastic and that makes for some of the ground handling difficulty. I'll just leave it up there, it'd be almost, okay, she's gonna turn around and show it. Here, give it to me and I'll do it. <laughs> Um, here. Yeah. We have it right here. Um, it's all pimped out and custom weathered. Lori's going to do it, but yeah, there it is right there. So that's the FMS 1100 millimeter. It's a great flying airplane. It's custom weathered out from us from a long time ago, but that's the plane we're talking about. Only problem with that airplane is it has a plastic tail wheel and it's very hard to fly. There's the little P, uh, P40 from FMS also. These are my wall decorations. 
Never seen around our shop. Yeah, anyway, whatever. That's fine. Um, that's the plane we we're talking about. But I'd like to see a 1600 millimeter zero. I really would like to see that. Um, it's a very pretty airplane. Maybe we'll get it down. We actually weathered it on the. Did we do that one on the channel? Which one? The zero. Uh, that might have been before we were doing the channel. No. That's one of my older airplanes. No, you did that one a long time ago. Yeah, I did that one a long time ago. I actually did. Because that's when you did the salt. That's a salt water weathering on that airplane, actually. So you, you paint the wings silver, you speckle salt all over the airplane, and then you paint green over the salt, and then when you clean the salt off, it leaves the silver like the paint's flaked off. And that one's actually done that way. The only problem with doing that technique is it rusts the poop out of all of your control horns. So. Just a heads up if you ever do that one. It doesn't hurt the foam at all. The plane's got a bunch of flights on it. That plane's been to Joe Nall. It's been to Joe Nall. Ain't, no, it just went to Joe Nall, not Fall Nall. But it's been, that plane's been good to me. I will say the little 1100 Zero has flown great. The little 1100 uh, P40 flies good. It's a little swirly, but it's, man, it's a ball when it's in the air. It's a 100 mile an hour airplane. Thanks, Timothy Tuton. We really appreciate that super chat, sir. The uh, salt effect is a really neat one if you've never tried it. It's a very distinctive one. Um, speaking, somebody was talking about distinctive props. Um, so the HE-111 wanted to do two-bladed props. The spinners that came with it would have worked. It would have all been good. But I wanted the three-bladed prop, and I wanted a German-style spinner, and that's where the TA-152 props came from. Now, they are not counter-rotating. I couldn't figure out a way to make counter-rotating props and get the German spinners that fit correctly without going do bro, and they were going to be a bazillion dollars, and I couldn't find them anywhere. So we're just not going to have counter-rotating props. All you got to do is not throw the coals to it all at once, and you'll be fine. The 1400 millimeter zero is actually scaled to the 1600 millimeter US fighter, is what EQRC says. Interesting. Very interesting. You know, I've always wanted to try that FMS zero. If it flies like the big zeros I have, I have a uh, 60 size zero out in the garage also. It's an old gas one, it's fiberglass fuse, balsa wing. We have been talking about revitalizing that airplane again and you know it just all takes time guys we have lots we've got lots of projects going on right now um so we've got you know three balsa planes currently working on um this one has flown had some issues we're working through those before we fly it again and get some more video out on that channel um, the nexa p47 man that one is spot on cannot recommend it enough that airplane is fantastic um, 6S power system all the way. I would highly recommend you stay with 6S. It's fantastic. The power, vertical for days, no worries. It was amazing. Will you have to synchronize the motors? Yes, we will. It's as easy as calibrating your ESEs. Um, not a big deal. Papa's Zero was a world's model. Yeah. <laughs> He had that back in the turn of the century. <laughs> old fart. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're an old fart. But, uh, no, I'm... Guys, there's never been... Once again, there's never been a better time to be a model airplane enthusiast. We have this, this line of airplanes coming out from Motion RC right now um, that are just fantastic. They've got the twin Mustang. They've got that, I forget the German fighter with the engine on the front and the one on the back. Eventually, I'd like to do that one too. It's just such an ugly and weird airplane. Um, they have the, what is it, the Ju-52 tri-motor German plane. I really like the look of that one, and it's only like 200 bucks. So I'd like to try that airplane eventually. I'm, I really am digging bombers, because growing up, bombers everybody looked at it and said oh well you're gonna fly it and one of the motors is gonna die and it's gonna fall out of the sky well now that we've got electric motors we don't have the issues of one of the motors dying and people can get mad at me i've got 10 bazillion comments now on the p47 that oh it's got an electric motor on a balsa plane that's sacrilege 
It flies and I don't have to worry about the motor quitting and I love it. I charge up my batteries, I get done, I come to the house and my house doesn't stink like fuel and I don't have to clean anything. Electric airplanes have ruined me. I'm spoiled and I want to stay on electric. Not to say I won't do one more big gas airplane, but it's going to be gasoline, not nitro. Nitro is not my thing anymore. I'll be as nice as I can. I think that nitro is the worst power system you can put on an airplane nowadays. Um, my personal opinion, it's not that I can't do it, it's not that we haven't done it, but with all the gasoline engines now that are so reliable, you can buy the gas at the gas station for two dollars for a gallon of it, mix it up with some oil and go fly all day, whereas nitro is twenty, twenty-five dollars a bottle now. And it's in, you know, a bottle of nitros one day. And, man, woo, I just, I can't do nitro anymore. I'm a gas guy. If I'm going to do a gasoline motor, it's going to be gasoline. So, but for me, the main thing, I like electric, man. They're just easy. Throw them, I got 10 bazillion batteries. Throw them in, whatever I got. Once you get your batteries paid for, as long as you take care of them, uh, you don't have issues with them. And, I mean, I like, you know, I, I like to spend a little bit more money than HRB on my batteries. I've heard good things. I have had bad luck with HRB. There's a lot of guys that swear by them, but Papa's got about four HRB batteries that have made it about a year and they're all puffed and ruined now. And he said, I'm not doing that again. I'm buying good quality batteries this time. Because Kevin has bazillion RC Jetworks batteries and we fly the poop out of them we haven't had any problems. RC Jetworks, Admiral, uh, the, the Spectrum Smart batteries, all three of those brands I haven't had any issues with that I've tried. Gen Ace, I've had pretty good luck with that. Um, so, you know, to each his own. I'm not telling you what to buy. If you want to buy HRB, do it. I'm just, I've always told you I would be honest with you guys. Um, like I said, those are my, my main, my main two would be Admiral and RC Jetworks. I can only pick two brands. They're more expensive. You get what you pay for. I've got a bunch of them, and they've never swelled, and they're over two years old now, and I've never had any issues out of them. So, anyway, just how it is. You know, I, Ryan O, I agree with you. I've had some Turnigy batteries that were really good. They've been holding up for quite a while. Um, it's Hobby King, though, and who knows if you can get them. Uh, it's not that I don't like Hobby King. I've never dealt with them really, but I, the few airplanes I have had, I've had issues getting parts for them. Uh, just my honest opinion. Um, who knows? It looks like Hobby King's trying to get something going again. We haven't, to be honest, until somebody mentions it to me, I don't think of Hobby King anymore because I think they've had one airplane come out in the last year. Um, that Goblin, and it looks cool. Um, I don't know if they're still in stock or not. Jeff's custom RC's in here. I know he's got a Goblin. Maybe he knows if they're still in stock. It looks like a really neat airplane. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know. I'd really like to try the Seaplane from Hobby King. There's like three airplanes from Hobby King that I actually want. Uh, the C-130, the, is it a Grumman Goose? It's something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a Seaplane though, and it looks really cool. And uh, that Durafly Spitfire looks really nice too, the big one. So those are those are my three big ones from Hobby King that I'd like to try uh, eventually. Anyway, Wreckham Roy got the Goblin. Whew! The the Grumman, the Grum. It's an albatross. I think you're right. It's not a goose. It's an albatross. It is a, it's a sweet looking plane. I'd really like to try it. Um, like I said, it's not, I don't have anything against Hobby Geek. I've never really dealt with them though. I haven't owned a lot of their airplanes. I had the EFX Extra. It was a ball of fun. Um, I, I just haven't had enough of them to speak for it. There you go. Honest truth. Mm, all my neutrons seem finicky though. Jackson, just seeing what's going on in the comments. Anyway, guys, I, I really just wanted to give y'all a little update on what's going on here. We have another special project coming up next weekend that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, can't tell you too much about it yet. 
We have the E-Flight Air Tractor coming up in the near future. Um, we have a Versus video coming up. Uh, I know a lot of our channel has really enjoyed the Versus videos. Um, and so we're going to be doing a Versus between the E-Flight and the Freewing F-18s. So I think that will be a really fun video, side-by-side -side comparison of the two jets. If you've been looking for them or looking at them, that's going to be very soon. Uh, we're going to get the maiden flights out of both of those airplanes. And they, I, Although we have done an E-Flight F-18 before on the channel, we're going to redo two different Two new F-18 maiden performance flights, and then we're going to do one versus video. So it'll be really cool. Um, and that's coming in the very near future. And as much stuff as I can put out, we're going to do. We've got trucks coming. Um, hint, 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 hint. And we've got some boat stuff. And we've got some crawler stuff. Um, you know, we're not just airplanes, guys. We do it all. Uh, we, we mainly do airplanes. Don't get me wrong. That's our main focus. But we like all aspects of RC hobby. If it, if it is remote control, I want to do it. I love it. If I could afford to get into them, I'd do trains too. But I know that'd be boring as heck for most of you. But I love trains. Um, but I don't have anywhere to do a train set. Because the train set that I want would take this whole room up. So I'm not going to get into trains. I don't want to go down that road. I looked at it really seriously for a little while there. And Lori said, I'm going to kill you if you take over another room in my house with your trains. Mm -hmm. So, airplanes is enough. The Fred Baron, thank you, sir. Counter-rotating funds <laughs> for the HE-111. Thank you, Fred Baron. Um, you guys that haven't checked out Fred, a lot of guys don't realize it, but Fred Barron actually has a YouTube channel also. Go check him out. That guy is a huge supporter of the Mary Boozers channel and all the other RC community. Um, so go check out Fred Barron. Say hi. Say I saw you in the Mary Boozers channel if you're new to it, new to us. Um, that's a great guy for the community. Um, so... Anyway, guys, that's kind of what's going on. Is there any other questions about the HE-111 before we wrap this up? Tonight was mainly on this airplane, um, but I wanted to go on and ask if there's anything else you wanted to see. Somebody came in late, wanted another shot of something, let me know. If not, we're going to be wrapping this up rather shortly. Um, do not forget, tomorrow night on the RC Air Marshals channel, we will be live with him, flying some Real Flight 9. Uh, having a ball. He does it once a month at the very first Monday of every month. It's always a good time and we always enjoy it and getting to fly with some of you from the community. Um, I don't see anything down there on the airplane. So anyway guys, be looking forward. It's an absolutely great time to be here with the Merry Boozers. We are working our hearts out to bring you all the newest and latest and greatest airplanes we can and revisit some of the old favorites. Lori, it stopped Does me. the Hinkle have any squadron markings? Uh, I believe this was the squadron markings down the side of it. It does not have a, like a squadron emblem. Uh, some of them had like a little shield up here on the front and stuff. Um, as far as an out of the box, I don't believe it came with any stickers. Dad, did you have any stickers? I think he's still watching. I don't think it did. Uh, not to say you can't make them, kind of like we did with the tail. We made this ourselves on our Cricut. Um, something else I wanted to... Let me ask this one question before I end up... I know, Lori, I'm sorry. Okay. Would you guys be interested in us doing a review on our Cricut... It's not a Cricut. Whatever it is. Our Silhouette, Silhouette Cameo. Cameo Sticker Maker. Um, we have a vinyl sticker cutter... And that's how we were able to make this swastika for the tail, is we have a machine that can cut out custom stickers. You know, it doesn't do naked ladies or anything, but if you want to make, uh, you know, so nameplates for your airplane or simple things like this cross here that's a two-color sticker, these letters down the side of the airplane, I could make them whatever I wanted with it. Would you guys be interested in knowing about that machine and a little bit of a review on how to 
how to use it? Dave Kowiski, yes. You know, guys, something I've always wanted to be able to do, and we finally did it, is be able to make my own graphics for my airplanes. Um, like, I can make a star and the circle and the bars on it for an American plane. It's only three pieces to make that. Um, you know, no kits nowadays come with swastikas because politically correct, all that stuff. Like, this torch is supposed to have one right back here on the tail. But politically correct, they can't do it anymore. But for a guy like me that likes historical accuracy, I want to be able to make my own stickers and do it correctly on the airplane. And if I wanted this to be a different squadron... So there's some guys that say yes. We have the machine. Um, we're getting where we know how to use it. If it is something you want to know about, we will definitely do just a quick thing saying here's what we use, here's the sticker material, that kind of stuff. It's really not too expensive. Speaking of naked ladies, when she has them. I talked to Callie two nights ago. Callie is currently working on the more risque section of the Mary Boozer's stickers. Um, for your nose arts of your airplanes, they will be very historically accurate. Let's put it that way. Um, they're coming. The uh, Boozer nose arts that are not safe for work are coming. So they will be through Cali Graphics, and uh, they're going to be a lot of fun. I know there's a lot of guys that are really liking those. So uh, anyway, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, check out, like I said, our buddies. I hope Jeff, if he didn't make it yet, go check him out. I know he was very close to hitting a thousand subscribers last time I talked to him. He's one of the nicest guys I know. Support that guy. Like I said, Air Marshal tomorrow. I'm not going to do the whole rundown tonight, guys. You know them all by now. Um, we'll see y'all in the next episode. Don't forget, next weekend's a lot of fun. And see y'all tomorrow on Air Marshal. So, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Five, four, three, two, one. Fly with your friends. Bye.